Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Relax. It's okay. <laughs> we won. <laughs> so it's clear that um, this uh, anti-immigrant fervor is at an all-time high across this nation. And it seems like with um, daily frequency, immigrant communities are being targeted. Their safety fractured, their families disrespected, separated, and their livelihoods threatened. And it, it is with their livelihoods in mind that we join here today. We're here because several brave home health aid workers who experienced unfair wage and retaliation practices by their employer decided to take matters into their own hands and to take action. And thanks to these incredible workers today, I am proud to announce that All Care, Home Care Agency, a New York-based home health aid company will make amends to over 100 workers, totaling $450,000 for cheating them out of wages and benefits and for unlawfully threatening deportation to immigrant workers when they complained about their unpaid wages. The more than 10 workers who reported the company's unlawful practices to my office will each receive approximately $8,000 for emotional distress. Our investigation found that in not paying the home health aides the amount that they were actually owed, the company was violating New York labor law the New York Home Health Care Worker Wage Parity Act and the New York Earned Sick Time Act. In particular, the company failed to pay aides working 24 hours shifts for every hour they worked and they failed to offer legally required paid leave policies. The health aides are among the many who uh, spend tireless hours caring for New York's aging and disabled population. Across the state, approximately 200,000 aides provide home health care services each and every day. And over 60% of home health aides in New York State are immigrants, and over 90% are women. And despite the vital importance of their work, home health, aid, health aides rarely earn above the minimum wage. And most aides statewide live well below the poverty level. I've known many home health aides. In fact, uh, I know them uh, personally. It was a home health aide who stayed with my mother and allowed me to work. And I want to thank her. I can truly say that they work tirelessly and thanklessly to care for our ailing and our aging loved ones, and they absolutely deserve every dollar and every cent that they earn. But most notably and most devastatingly, All Care retaliated against immigrant workers by threatening to call immigration authorities uh, when these workers sought the unpaid wages that they were entitled to. Um, and each year, more than six million undocumented workers experience wage theft, while, while 85 percent of immigrant workers report suffering uh, overtime violations. And immigrants have the right to work without the threat of being targeted by their employers because of their immigration status. And this past legislative session, uh, we, the Office of Attorney General, we codified that right um, when the state anti-immigration retaliation bill that originated from our office became law. And I want to thank the state legislature. The law creates much needed penalties for employers who retaliate against employees by threatening them with contacting immigration authorities. Our office will continue to hold employers accountable for violating labor laws and, prom and promote fairness and respect for working New Yorkers regardless of their immigration status. Anyone who ignores the human rights of individuals obviously uh, will be prosecuted by this office. We will pursue justice for individuals who unfortunately feel like they have no one to turn to. That's why this office is here. We are in the justice business, and it's, I'm so honored and privileged to have provided justice to these vulnerable workers. And I'm so glad that they were able to stand up for their rights, and I'm so glad that they uh, decided to, do, uh, to uh, stand up uh, for what is right under the law. And it's critically important um, for obviously for us to use the law both as a sword and as a shield to protect vulnerable workers. And it's important that we stand up for their rights and we stand up for them without fear of punishment. And so I want to thank Take Root Justice. I want to thank a National Mobilization Against Sweatshops for joining me today and for their help in bringing this issue to my office's attention. And of course, to all of the workers who have joined me today and who have showed great courage we're not afraid to stand up against these unjust labor practices. And we are here uh, not because of uh, the Attorney General, but because of these brave men and women. And the first that I would like to introduce to you is um, Josta uh, Barrios. 
a worker who was employed by All Care, the victim of their predatory practices. Ms. Barrios, the podium is yours. Mi nombre es Gusta Barrios. Primeramente agradezco a la Fiscal General todos los apoyos que nos ha dado a nosotros. Y, y he trabajado cuidadora de hogar por 18 años. Ha trabajado, es un trabajo muy difícil. Lo hacemos con amor y respeto. Este apoyo del Fiscal General ayuda a nosotros, trabajadores, de poder luchar para nuestro derecho y nuestro pago mejores condiciones. Por ejemplo, yo trabajé 14 años de 24 horas, 4 días, 5 días por semana, a un costo grande a mi familia y a mi salud. Levanto mi voz y levanto mi voz para decir no más por experiencia. Yo digo que tenemos que parar turno 24 horas, tenemos que dividirlo dos turnos. 12 y 12, nosotros somos seres humanos, tenemos familia, estamos cuidando personas con necesidades serias. Invito a todos los trabajadores los, en los hogares y a todos los trabajadores unirse con nosotros para terminar el día 24 horas, para tener, para tener una vida mejor. Gracias. Gracias. Next, I want to invite uh, Selena Martinez who was also employed by All Care to share her story. Ms. Martinez. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Sileni Martinez. También soy una cuidadora en los hogares. Y estoy aquí en representación de EMAS. EMAS es una movilización nacional en contra de la explotación, donde nos reunimos trabajadores en to de todas las industrias para luchar contra el robo de salario. Trabajos a largas horas. I'll be translating for Salemi. Um, Perdón. Sorry. Uh, my name is Salemi Martinez. I am also a home care worker. Um, I am here as a representative of NMAS, an organization, uh, mobilization against sweatshops. We're here today um, uniting with workers across industries and all backgrounds against wage theft and exploitation on our jobs and our communities. See you. In nuestros trabajos y en nuestras comunidades, luchando contra la explotación en nuestros en nuestros trabajos y en nuestras comunidades. El trabajo de cuidadoras en los hogares es muy exigente. Y los turnos de 24 horas afectan nuestra salud y nuestras familias. Enfrentamos tales abusos Trabajamos cuatro, cinco y seis días a las semanas. Yo, por ejemplo, trabajé 27 años, la mayoría turnos de 24 horas. Encima de ellos, me pagaban 13 horas por el turno de 24. Somos latinos, africanos, caribeños, afroamericanos, puertorriqueños, Somos sindicalistas y algunos somos perdón, somos sindicalizados y algunos sin sindicatos. The 24 hour workday is very difficult and very grueling. 24 hour shifts affect our health and our families. We face abuse. We work four, five, six days a week for years on end. We are I, I, for one, was employed for 25 years and was paid only 13 hours for 24-hour shifts. Many of us are Latinos, mm -hmm. Chinese, Afro-Caribbean, African-Americans, Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. Some of us are yeah. union and non-union workers. ¿En qué otro país hay una jornada laboral de 24 horas? Esto es un insulto para todos los trabajadores. Las cuidadoras están li li liderando a otros trabajadores que también trabajan largas horas y no tienen control sobre sus tiempos. In what other country do 24-hour shifts exist? This is an insult for all workers. 
as home care workers, we are giving leadership to workers, all workers, who work long hours and don't have control over their time. Apreciamos a la fiscal general al tomar este caso y apoyarlo, apoyando a las cuidadoras en su lucha para mejorar las condiciones de los pacientes y trabajadores sin represalias, especialmente en este clima político. Esperamos que el fiscal general pueda continuar apoyando a los trabajadores para defender sus derechos y, mejor, y mejorar las condiciones. We give thanks to the Attorney General for taking on these cases and for supporting workers in the struggle for better conditions for patients and workers without, without retaliation. So especially in this political climate, we hope that the Attorney General will continue to support workers and defend their rights and improve the conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. And now I'm going to be translating for Justa. My name is Justa Barrios. I thank the Attorney General and all of the workers in our group who are here with us today. I worked as a home care worker for 18 years. It is a difficult job, but we do it with love and respect. This support that the Attorney General is giving us, workers, to be able to fight for our rights, for our pay, and better conditions. For example, I work 14 hours, uh, 14 years, 24 hour shifts, four or five days a week at a, gr at a huge cost to my family and my health. I'm, today I'm standing up to say no more. Because of my experience, we need to stop these 24 hour shifts. We need to divide them in 12 and 12 into split shifts because we're human beings, we have families and we have people we care for with serious health issues. So I invite other home care workers and in home attendants and other jobs to unite with us to put an end to these 24 hour shifts for a better life. Thank you. And our last speaker will be uh, Tito Sinha, the workers' rights supervising attorney at Tate and Justice. Mr. Sinha. We thank the Attorney General and the dedicated work of their office on this case to fight wage theft, protect workers from retaliation, and bring relief to this group of home care workers. Home care workers are among the most vulnerable of New York's workers, the majority of whom are low wage and women of color who are subject to unpaid wages, unpaid overtime, and 24-hour shifts. In today's hostile anti-immigrant political climate, Home care workers are also subject to retaliatory threats and actions when they stand up for their rights at the workplace. We commend the Attorney General's leadership to protect the rights of immigrants. Most importantly, we thank these workers for their courage to come forward and fight for their rights. Together, the Office of the Attorney General, the workers, and worker advocates have sent a strong message today that in New York, we will stand with immigrants and fight for social justice. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my uh, great, wonderful, and tireless staff for their work in seeing the settlement through. Uh, Civil Enforcement Section Chief uh, Ming Chi Yu, raise your hand. There you go. Okay. Assistant Attorney General Michael Cowles, raise your hand. Uh, he's of the Labor Bureau, which is supervised by Acting Bureau Chief Julie Olnit. Additionally, I'd like to thank former data analyst uh, William Greenwald of the Research and Analytics Department, which is under the supervision of Deputy Director Megan Thorsfeld and Director Jonathan Wilberg. And of course, we want to thank the Chief Deputy Attorney General for Social Justice Division, who's hiding in the back, Megan Fox. Thank you, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just a couple factual questions. What's the average hourly wage that they were supposed to have been paid? What is their immigration status, and what is their employment status with this company currently? So the 13, um, uh, that were uh, undocumented, um, are no longer working at uh, All Care. Um, on average, uh, they will receive from this settlement $8,000 each. Um, the other individuals um, who were alleging um, uh, wage violations and violations related to the Parity Act and, vi and 
um, labor law, um, those individuals uh, will receive an award of $450,000, and it's difficult to um, tell what each individual will make uh, because it all depends upon their circumstances and the number of hours that they worked. Why did they leave employment? With the company. So um, the 13, because there was an audit, this came about as a result of an audit, and the individuals did an audit to determine whether or not individuals were in fact documented. When they uncovered that these 13 were undocumented, they were um, fired, um, and they had uh, sought um, uh, to get unpaid wages. And when they sought to get their unpaid wages, they were told that they would be reported to ICE. And as a result of that, they contacted our office, and we uncovered as a result of our investigation other labor violations. And who was the auditor? Was it the federal government? Was it private? It was private. It was within all care. They did some audit. They were checking their um, documentation. And just finally, those the 13 are still in the United States? Yes, there, and some of them are in this room. Yeah. Uh, they were talking about 24-hour shifts. Where is that? What's, is that legal? Uh, so, um, as you know, um, the 24-hour sh shift rule, there's a, a provision in the regulation which basically says that individuals should only be paid for 13 hours, particularly um, they should not be paid for the remaining hours if they are afforded sleep um, and if they are afforded breaks. So, on average, they are only paid for 13 hours. Um, currently, there is legislation in Albany to, one, correct abuses related to the 24-hour rule, and two, to address this requirement um, that individuals uh, not be paid uh, additional um, wages uh, for the period that they sleep and, and that they are afforded breaks. Um, are Ms. Uh, Martinez and Ms. Barrios, are they both um, former All Care employees? Yes. Okay. And they're both, neither of them are working there. Anymore. Correct. Um, so the 13 individuals you said complained to the office, they have been terminated and they want to go back wages. They're yeah. getting 8000 for emotional distress. Are they getting back wages? So, yeah, they're getting back wages, um, but they were additionally uh, getting $8,000 for emotional distress. Okay, but that's over and above. Yes, over and above, yeah. And, and then, so if it's legal to only pay them 13 hours out of 24, what were... Because they were not, um, in some cases, they were not sleeping, they in fact were working. I see. And so it's only when they are actually sleeping, they're not entitled to any additional uh, wages. But when, in fact, they continue to work, they're entitled to additional wages. And they were, I, I was told... Um, they were, the employer believed that they were undocumented. Our office has no actual knowledge of their particular immigration status. But they were terminated on the Correct. Right. And um, how much were they being paid? Was it minimum wage for 13 hours? It was minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Is there any estimate of how much that back pay will be? No, it's difficult because it all depends upon the number of hours that, that each individual worked. So it's hard to break it down. How are you determined? By timesheets or by what they say? Or how do you determine what the back pay is? I think it would be by timesheets. Timesheets, time yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So <laughs> the 450000 yes. that's just the back, back pay and benefits. And then it's 8000 times 13 Correct. in addition. Correct. Over how many years do these allegations go back? We we're talking about workers who have been there for more than a decade. So are they saying that from the very beginning, this is what they experienced? So what, what's the time period? About two years. The company only started about two years. So it's a two-year period because the LP only started about two years ago. And the audit was when? The audit was, I think, within the last year. About two years ago. Two years ago. When did they complain to your office? Um, they came here in, in around the same time, around two years ago. They have decades of experience. So would you say these abuses are widespread in this industry? So, uh, again, we are looking at um, other companies with respect to the abuse, particularly related to the 24-hour rule, and we are looking at um, other businesses as it relates to wage violations um, and the failure to pay overtime and the benefits of wage parity law. Is there one part of the city, one borough that these workers had to be from, or was no, it from all of the city? No, it's all over the city here, unfortunately. And are there any penalties against the employer for uh, threatening to report them to ICE? Is it so as a result of the legislation that this office uh, put forward, um, clearly what we are doing is codifying and making it illegal um, and a violation for individuals um, to report, um, uh, to, to basically use their status as a, as a, as a threat to uh, uh, contact ICE. And so that bill was passed um, in the legislature, and it will become effective in this um, next month in October. Is there anything all care will have to do differently going forward as a result of the settlement, um, as opposed to the legislation? There is some injunctive relief, and we can get you that. That was negotiated with all care. The more than 100 workers who were impacted by what happened here, are all of them undocumented immigrants? No, 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 no. Just, just the 13? Yeah. Just the 13.
I'm sorry, Frank. So the 24-hour work rule, as you know, it's just pending in Albany. It has not been passed. The bill that was passed has to do with reta retaliation. And hopefully this legislative session, um, the legislature will take up this 24-hour rule. Um, one, related to the abuse, that individuals are not being paid. And two, with respect to the fact that individuals want uh, a 12-hour, 12, 12 and 12-hour shift. They want that 24-hour broken up. And they want to be paid accordingly. There's pains. The, their salary is it Medicaid? Is it Medicare? Is it private family? So we can get you a breakdown of the. It's primarily Medicaid, but in some cases, for instance, in um, my particular case, when we were using an agency, it was private money involved. And One is more this, question. Is this agreement codified in the copy that we can have? The um, a copy of our your uh, settlement with our settlement. Can we get, can they get a copy of the settlement? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can yeah. Get that to off so was, yeah, was, was the company resistant? Were they nasty? Were they cooperative? And uh, how do you feel in your heart of hearts about, about winning this? Let's just say they were, it was a productive discussion. <laughs> and it, it, it usually is a productive discussion when you have a, in your hand a subpoena. <laughs> Off topic? What's the time frame that these workers are going to get paid for the time that they didn't get paid in the past? I and mean, when is that going to see this today? Have they received their money as of yet? Okay. So they've partially received some of the funds, and then um, over a period of time, they will, they will receive the remaining of the um, settlement. What's the nature of the threat? They, 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 they will report them to ICE if they are undocumented, um, and that uh, they should be reported. And, and that, did that in fact ever happen? Uh, did they ever did contact? Did they report them to ICE that you know of? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think so. They came to our office as a result, um, and then we contacted All Care and announced an investigation. Off topic. Can you explain why you direct the makers to do the self raid kit to cease and desist operations? Um, because there's a question with regards to the quality of the kit. There's a question as to whether or not it's admissible, and you can get these services for free. And so as a result of that, we believe that they were taking advantage of vulnerable individuals, and it's really critically important that they cease their operations. Do you think there's any value to those do-it-yourself kits if women are traumatized and don't want to go to a medical We don't center? know, and that's the question, whether or not the quality of the kit. Um, we don't know the quality of the kit. We don't know whether or not uh, the kit is admissible in court. And lastly, um, you, individuals can get these services free. And so we just think that the, this company, these companies are taking advantage of vulnerable women. Thank you all. Yes, let me get you one.